All right, let's discuss the infraclavicular subclavian approach. It's actually my favorite approach for trauma patients. They have a collar on, you can't really do an IJ. Um, it has probably the lowest incidence of infection associations uh, because the patient's not drooling on it. It's not underneath their groin, which is a dirty area like a femoral line would be. So it's a really nice line for patients that are gonna keep these uh, central lines in for a while. Now, it does have a higher complication rate, I think, in the hands of inexperienced operators. Once you get experience with this line, the complication rate is quite low. But you can't use ultrasound, unfortunately, at least not yet. So you do have to become skilled at landmark placement. You want to feel the sternal notch, and you want to actually find your clavicle, and that's what I'm feeling now. Now, at some point, the clavicle actually changes from a straight to a kind of a swept back diagonal portion. This is how the clavicle actually is feeling on the patient right now. You can see this finger is representing the portion that's coming from the sternal notch straight out, and then at some point it transitions to an actual um, slant back towards the patient's shoulder. So this is what the clavicle actually looks like. Uh, it's like that. What I like to do is where that straight portion meets that angled portion, which is right here, is where I'll actually um, go underneath the clavicle. All right. What we have is a very rough representation of the patient's anatomy here. You have your sternal notch, you have your clavicle, and the clavicle goes straight for a portion and then it kind of sweeps back towards the patient's shoulder. Um, and the way I like to perform this procedure is I'll find all my landmarks and I'll find where it transitions from that straight portion of the clavicle to that diagonal portion. And that's actually where I'm going to go underneath the clavicle. If you try to come in more medial, what often happens is there's so much muscle um, where the pectoralis attaches that sometimes it's really tough to get underneath the bone. But if you move out here, what you'll find is you have a nice, easy spot where you could actually even stick your finger all the way underneath the clavicle. And that's, I think, the best spot to enter for your uh, infraclavicular placement. So what I'll actually do is I'll find that spot, feel it with my finger, and actually do my skin puncture about a centimeter away. And this gives me time to actually get through the skin and transition. Now, what you're doing is putting negative pressure on the syringe the whole time, and you're just going towards your sternal notch. Now sometimes, and it's, it's scary when you first start this, you do have to hub the needle in order to get your flash. And that's acceptable for a subclavian um, through the infraclavicular site. You should never be doing that for an IJ um, because the IJ is just not that deep. But sometimes it will take this much um, depth of needle to get your flash. So when we actually are now ready to see this on a real patient, we'll find our sternal notch, we'll find our clavicle, we'll find that transition point, which is right here, where it goes from straight to curved back. I'll start a centimeter back, and now I like to hit the bone. I'm hitting the bone right now. I actually feel my uh, needle hitting bone. And you'll see my needle is actually parallel to the ground. The biggest mistake to make with a subclavian is to raise the back of this syringe even the slightest bit off the horizontal. If you start doing things like this, this is where pneumothoraxes um, get started, is this motion right here. So the whole time, you're directly parallel to the ground and just aiming towards your sternal notch. Now, if I'm hitting bone directly parallel to the ground, you say to me, well, how am I ever going to get underneath that bone? The way you do it is, I'll actually push the whole needle and lower my syringe. So instead of raising the back, I'm pushing the whole thing down. So I'm staying parallel to the ground, but I just push the whole thing down. And you see, we hit flash right as we are at the hub of the needle, and that's not uncommon. All right? So you saw, we never moved off the parallel. We're staying parallel, 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 and we get our flash right there. That is the key. The way, if you want to do this the wrong way, try something like this. Find that straight portion of the clavicle right here, and you're actually going to hit the bone. Oh, I can't get under. I can't get under. Oh, I'll push it down. No, the needle's bending. It's not working. Oh, I'll just raise the hub. And yes, you will get under the clavicle, and you'll go directly into either your subclavian artery, which we just did, or into the lung. So the key is to never move off horizontal. And if you try it this way, I think you'll like it. Straight. And here it's going back diagonally. I'll start a centimeter away at the skin. Actually puncture, hit bone, which is right there. And then just go underneath until I sometimes will have to hub the needle and I'll get my flash. And at this point, you take your syringe off, 
Hold your needle with your finger over the hole, get your wire, and finish the procedure.